So this video is going to serve as an introduction to B cell activation. And so we've gone through the development of B cells in the bone marrow, generating uh, trillions of different possible antigen binding sites. And once B cells mature and become naive B cells, they circulate throughout the body between the blood and the lymph nodes looking for a pathogen to bind, specifically looking for a match for their antigen binding sites for their Ig molecules. So this is the video just going to serve as a introduction to the, all the processes we're going to talk about shortly in the next few videos. So here you'll see that we're in a lymph node. So in the lymph node, pathogens drain into the lymph node via the lymphatic system. You've got lymph vessels which drain interstitial fluid from inflamed sites, and if there is a pathogen infecting some tissue or some organ, the uh, pathogen will hopefully be drained into some lymph tissue or lymph node. So if we're talking about the GI tract, it could be any one of the pyres patches or the gastrointestinal associated lymphoid tissue, the GALT, or the BALT for bronchial associated or MALT for mucosal associated. So anywhere in the body, Hopefully a pathogen, if it's infected, if it has uh, infected our body, will be drained into some lymphatic tissue or lymph node. Here, we're going to have B cells circulating through the lymph nodes looking for a match to it, their antigen binding sites. So in this uh, situation here, we've got three different B cells. They might look the same, but they are different because they've chosen different VDJs, they have different junctional diversity, combination of light and heavy chain. So each of these B cells has a different antigen binding site based on uh, somatic recombination and junctional diversity. So um, this B cell will approach this pathogen and check its antigen binding sites to see if it has any affinity for this pathogen. If it doesn't, well, it'll just ignore it and move on to anything else that might look fine in the lymph node. The second B cell, it's going to use its Ig with its antigen binding sites to see if it binds any antigen. Now, it doesn't. It doesn't have any affinity. Its VDJs, its somatic recombination, gave it a variable region that does not match anything on the surface of this pathogen. Okay, so it goes away. That third B cell, now it turns out its VDJ that it chose in its light chain, and I'm sorry, heavy chain, its JVJ that it chose in its heavy chain, sorry, its light chain, uh, its junctional diversity, all of that has given it, uh, just by chance, a variable region in both the light and heavy chain that came together that formed antigen binding sites that bind something on the surface of this pathogen has affinity for some molecule, some protein, some sugar, some lipid, something about this uh, pathogen binds with some decent affinity to the antigen binding sites on this B cell. So what is going to happen now is something called clonal selection. This one B cell has been selected out of the billions of B cells in the body it has been selected and it will now clone itself. So what do we mean by clone itself? It'll undergo mitosis, lots and lots of mitosis. And this is the first process of B cell activation, which we'll cover in the next video. So when a B cell does recognize the pathogen, it undergoes B cell activation. Now many things can happen via B cell activation. One of the first things is mitosis. We're gonna to need to make an army of B cells because we only have one B cell, who knows how many of these pathogens are? So um, for clonal selection, one of the first things that occurs is lots and lots of mitosis. So now we have an army of clones and they all have antigen binding sites that bind this pathogen. Let me mute my phone, excellent. Now, many things could happen at this point, and it depends on the pathogen, depends on the rest of the immune system, but I'm just gonna review them shortly and then we'll go into detail in further videos. So um, remember that naive B cells have on their surface expressed IgM and IgD isotypes of immunoglobulin heavy chains. So what can happen to some of these uh, B cells is they can differentiate almost immediately into plasma cells. So they go from making membrane-bound IgM to secreting IgM. And that process, hopefully you recall, is mediated by uh, alternative splicing. So it can happen very quickly and very easily. So IgM is typically the first antibody released uh, upon B cell activation. This antibody tends to have a low affinity compared to the other isotypes, and we'll see why shortly. But IgM, 
good first blast against the pathogen. Some of these other B cells are going to, could undergo uh, processes which are going to improve the immune response and the immune attack. So some B cells might undergo somatic hypermutation, which we covered in an early video, which involved mutating the variable regions of the light and heavy chain, and this could improve the affinity of the Ig molecule for the antigen. This would result in affinity maturation. Once this occurs, you have uh, B cells that have Ig on their surface that have a higher affinity for the pathogen much better to fight the pathogen with. Also, during um, this process, another thing goes on called isotype switching. So not only does the antibody get better, does it improves in its uh, antigen binding, but it switches to the isotype that is best uh, utilized to fight the infection, depending on the location of the body. And so we, when you switch isotypes, that means going from IgM to either IgG, A, E, uh, let's say this is switched from IgG, because that was the best antibody isotype to fight this pathogen. And so then you will have cells that differentiate either into plasma cells, which will release IgG that has much higher affinity than the IgM, or you'll have cells that turn into memory cells. And these cells will last your entire life, hopefully, and fight the pathogen and prevent you from becoming reinfected with it. So this is just an overview of the next few videos that we will talk about uh, that cover B cell activation and all the processes that occur during and after B cell activation.